and they say five, four, three, two, one. Hey, hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are on the planet. And welcome to Adromeda. We're here. There was a lot of question as to whether or not that was going to happen, but we are here. And I will explain that as we go. So good evening and it's evening my time, wherever you are. Or perhaps it's in the middle of the day, but the moon makes it look like evening. I hope you get to see that. We'll talk about that. Uh, this is Andromeda, another Dave Rush Ask Me Anything Digital Alchemy, and I am the aforementioned, excuse me, Dave Rush, your tech from Texas. And we're here because we like tech. We talk about tech. That's the, the name of the game. Uh, I have kind of a particular... Uh, my voice is super deep again. So I'm going to change to the audio system. Uh, just before I started up, I, I jacked up the amplification of the mic. <laughs> I beg your pardon. So maybe that has some impact on it. Let me lower it just to see if that does anything. Uh, but it, it's a fresh boot, so whatever our usual problems are. I've taken that down by about 30%. And we shall see. Volume is low, but not crazy low. And I hate this thing. I just do not have this part figured out. Either that or you're just all critics. <laughs> hey, so uh, we got some fun today. Uh, there was, uh, again, a lot of questions whether or not there was even going to be a show today. But, uh, Put one together, and it's going to be interesting. I, I did not get one put together until two hours ago. I just started putting it together two hours ago because the week and the weekend were just insane. I had this awesome project that I set out. I knew that I was going to do this project uh, weeks ago. So right after the show last week, I pulled out my notes and got the research prepping with the plan to work on it every night for a while. And because of the vicissitudes of the rest of life, I never got to it. And yesterday, I, uh, yesterday, so I got in very late yesterday and there wasn't time to work on it. I needed to get some sleep, so I couldn't work on it this morning. And there's work to do during the work day. And so work day gets done and I look at it and said, there's just no time to put that one together. Let me look through my list of maybes and possibilities and see if there's something that I can put together in a timely fashion. And lo and behold, I found one. So I've been working my uh, backside off for the last couple hours, getting this thing prepped and ready to rock. And we have a show. So show news and happenings today. If you are watching this on the archive is Thursday, October 19th. And last week, we survived another Friday the 13th. That's a... Should I do this? That's a, the... Not the date, but the uh, the event uh, that my father passed away on. Uh, it was a uh, Friday the 13th. So I guess it holds special meaning for me. It's not like I got maudlin about it or anything. I got up and I didn't really think about it much until the... Uh, toward the end of the day. And so, oh yeah, it was Friday the 13th. Uh, Saturday, the 14th, was an annular eclipse that passed over Texas, a little south of me for the path of, we'll call it totality. An annual eclipse, annular eclipse is not a total eclipse. The moon goes in front of the sun, but doesn't completely cover it. So you get a rim on the outside. If you're not right there in the center of where it all happens, then you get kind of a thumbnail effect, sort of like the thumbnail shadow on the moon or vice versa. And uh, we weren't in a, a position that we were able to drive south to go get the hotality, but uh, it got cool up here. Evening breezes started to flow. And I didn't dig out the, the safety goggles or anything like that, but if you, I meant to talk about this last week. If you want to see an eclipse, obviously don't look up because uh, you don't feel your retinas when they burn away. But what you do is you make a pinhole camera. You can just take a piece of paper and literally poke a pin in it and put that between the sun and a white surface. Sidewalks work great for that. And you can see a little bit of the sun or moon creep in, 
creep in, creep in. And if you know it's whole annular, then you can see the whole thing. If not, it kind of goes in and out like that. And I didn't want to do that this year because one year, last time we had an annular eclipse, I'm thinking this one, 2017, uh, I was on the road somewhere and I was, I think I was in Chicago, but I don't know. I was walking down the streets of a, a big city, lunch hour or something like that. And I had something in my hand that had a bunch of small, regularly spaced holes in it. And I, I hadn't even thought about Eclipse that day. It was a busy day, as I recall. Uh, but I'm carrying it, and uh, I looked down at my shadow, and I saw the, the light shadow coming through there, and there was a whole bunch of developing Eclipses. And I said, oh, man, that's my go-to for the future. So just before it was due to start, I grabbed a colander with tiny little eighth-inch holes or so, something like that, and a little white, call it plate, and took that out, put it between the sun and the plate, and we went out, my, uh, my missus and I went out every 15 or 20 minutes and just watched the moon march across most of the sun. We had about 80, 85% totality here. It was a lot of fun. I took that over to the neighbors to show them. They've got young kids, and uh, the, the missus could not get into her kitchen fast enough to get a colander and a piece of white cardboard. So it was a fun time around the neighborhood, and I enjoyed that one. We've got a couple really good eclipse events coming up in the next few years. Uh, next year, April next year, we've got a total eclipse that's going to pass a big chunk of the U.S. Uh, almost no matter where you are, you're a short drive away from totality. And 2039 is the next time we see an annular eclipse over the U.S. So I hope I'm here for it. All right, well, let's see who's here and what they're saying, and then we'll do some more of this gobbledy. Uh, Tullowit got in at 5.25, two, uh, an hour and a half before showtime. Yeah, I didn't get the show up until then, like I said, because I wasn't sure there was going to be a show. And I was trying to figure out if there isn't. How do I do that? Should I come on for you know, two or three minutes and say, sorry, don't have anything, but just wanted to... You know, so it say say so in person because there's no good way on YouTube to have something automatically go up and show up where you want to see it, where you expect to see it, uh, and that that just bothered me. We have n never missed a show of a drama since we launched it at the beginning of February. I don't ever want it. It's going to happen one day, but uh, maybe it happened once, something like that. But uh, the, the worst case that I ever do is just open topic. I didn't want to do open topic today. Uh, Kylie Chisholm is here. Nice to see you, Kylie. Thank you for turning up, especially because I didn't put any posts up on my usual social media sites. I think most of the folks here usually see me on uh, LinkedIn, I, and I usually do a, a heads up. The Thursday show is going to be this, and I do that on Monday, and then Thursday morning I do another heads up, and it, I just didn't do it, thinking there was every chance it wasn't going to happen. Kylie, oh, my thought. <laughs> we were going to start in six minutes. Yeah, you, this whole time thing is is real uh, confusticating to you. And remember, we've got an, a time change coming up. Uh, what is it, November 7th? No, November 5th. So we're a couple weeks away from that. And we're, uh, what, a week away from Halloween? 12 days away. So a little bit on that. Oh, what else is going on? Oh, we're still checking people here. Then Tullowit showed up his usual time, half an hour before showtime. Hello, Tullowit. Hello, Patricia Grace. And all the nerds. Poll. Put a pecan ice cream for dessert or skip dessert? Decidedly skip dessert. I love ice cream. Haven't had it in a long time. But butter pecan. That was my mom's favorite. Uh, it just... I don't like pecans. I eat them. I eat them every single day. I eat the same lunch every day for the last two and a half years now. Uh, a little bouillon, a little hot water, a handful of hazelnuts, a handful of pecans for the protein, and uh, a little bit of lemon juice, tiny little bit, and a tiny little bit of hot oil or hot sauce in the event of hot oil. Uh, but I'm just not a fan. And, and I'll tell you, that, here's my pecan story. The missus and I, we've been married for 
more years than I care to fess up. Okay, 37 years. Our anniversary was eight days ago? Yeah, the 11th. Uh, and we didn't do anything for our anniversary. <laughs> it's when you're this old, and if it doesn't happen on a weekend, it's not going to happen. Anyways, uh, when we were dating, so more than 37 years ago, uh, I was over visiting uh, with one of her aunts. There was a, a family shindig over there. Bring the boyfriend. Okay, the boyfriend came over, and Aunt Grace said, Oh, would you like a piece of pie for dessert? Sure, I would love a piece of pie. And she brought out a, a slab of pecan pie. Oh, I can't imagine a, a worse thing. But, you know, I'm the boyfriend. I want to get on with the family. I ate my pecan pie like eating vegetables for a four-year-old and uh, all done she said oh you must have really liked that oh my goodness yes it's the best pecan pie i've ever had here's another slice ah <laughs> it's family lore now everybody knows about aunt grace has long since passed on but <laughs> pecans <laughs> there are certain foods in the universe that i think you have to have been starving to say, oh, let's eat that. Um, <laughs> shellfish without legs. Okay, clams, oysters. Who said, oh, man, we are so hungry. Let's see, open that thing and see if there's something to eat in there. Crawdads, crawfish. What? How the heck hungry could you be? Uh, nobody here from Massachusetts that I can see. Gooey duck. <laughs> Frog legs. Oh, that looks delicious. <laughs> Escargot. Starving French people. Uh, and they discovered, man, you've got to be so starving that you better drown that thing in garlic and butter because it's edible. <laughs> and I've eaten alligator tail. I've eaten some weird stuff. And, and some of it's pretty darn good. But uh, alligator tail is terrible. <laughs> well, did I sidetrack? Sure, why not? Sorry, reading messages here. I'm sliding past my own message. I like that Charles Schultz quote. I was looking for Eclipse quotes. I'm done with my movie uh, quotes for the, that particular movie. The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. If you have not bothered following it. it, it look, if you're a nerd, if you're a tech weenie, and you haven't seen that, watch it. And watch it many times. You will get something different every time. I've been watching it for decades. And I still find different stuff each time. <laughs> kind of, I've never had peanut butter. Not peanut butter. Pecan, right? Butter pecan. Had peanut butter milkshake. And now I love peanut butter milkshakes. My favorite ice cream is uh, from Baskin Robbins. Jamocha Almond Budge. Mmm. Man, that stuff is heaven. And I did... Take it up a notch. Jamocha almond fudge milkshake. Extra thick. That is a life unto its own. Jason Helms, what's up, everyone? Hello, Jason Helms. I was about to say that, but you were chanting Dave, Dave, Dave. <laughs> Mazel tov, gracias. <laughs> I don't know how to say thank you in Yish. I can say Mazel tov with the rest of them. Tell what will tell me in a moment. I decided on gumdrops, grapes from the grocery store. Gumdrops. Is, like, is that what we call moondrops here? I like them. What are gumdrops, grapes, and Bee Gees? <laughs> alligator's good, depending on how it's cooked. I've never had alligator meat, just tail. I've certainly seen it cooked around here. Uh, Asian dish that I've had that I can't remember the name. Well, that's helpful. But it's a fertilized egg. You open the egg. Oh, man. They're, you do it with duck. You don't do it with chicken. I've seen people eat it. I was so horrified. But, yeah. Okay. Balut. Balu. It's a kind of grapes. They have grape, jelly grapes. Yeah, those are Concords. I, had a, I grew up. Uh, through my my junior high and teen years, uh, in across the on the other side of the fence of my backyard was a vineyard, and they grew Concord grapes and white grapes and all kinds of other grapes, and uh, they didn't have automatic harvesting. That was how kids made money. Uh, 
is when harvest time came around, the entire community would go there and they would give you a pair of shears and a bucket and tell you where to cut grapes from. And you would just cut grapes and you got 50 cents for what was basically a bushel basket. <laughs> but I made a lot of money and they always let you take grapes home. So my mom would make grape jelly and can it. Kylie, I had to eat it at a boyfriend's house. Remind me of Dave's story. <laughs> I read the butter pecan thing wrong. Okay. I didn't know there were varieties of grapes. Oh, goodness, yes. <laughs> Asian dish sounds super weird. It was a good, yeah. I remember seeing that on, on television more than 20 years ago. It still sticks with me, the, the whole idea. <laughs> we don't have it in Canada. <laughs> it looks, yeah, it was horrible. I think. Okay, so... Like many Yiddish things, very close to German. Balu is, is, is. Do you pronounce the T, Tolowit? Or is it Balu? Put it in phonetically. Very common here. I've never eaten it. Good for you. All right, back to notes. How are we doing here on time here? Okay, we're only uh, 16 minutes in. Time. So, what else is going on in the news? Uh, um, So, last week we had on Friday. Uh, Friday the 13th on Saturday was the eclipse. A couple days before that, last Tuesday. Uh, I miss this. I didn't find out until about Friday. Didn't make the news until then. But we lost a celebrity. Mark Goddard. Major Don West of the original Lost in Space series. He successfully returned to Earth at the age of 87. And Trivia, Lost in Space, ran 83 episodes over three seasons from 65 through 68. They do like 10 shows a year and call that a season anymore. So imagine that, 83 shows in three years. Just nobody does anything close to that. Uh, man of Design, oh, and, uh, so here, so I've got this up here. We're done with that. So in my original slide... I put the whole cast up, including my favorite character over on the right-hand side, the B9. He just called him Robot. And over here, uh, over my right shoulder, I put my B9 up. The person, the guy who designed Robbie the Robot from Forbidden Planet. I have a Robbie here. Love my Robbie the Robot. Uh, he also designed... The B9. And if you are a real follower of the show, you'll know that they were actually on Lost in Space together at some for some episode. <clears throat> I don't go to the Renfest much anymore. It's been a couple of years. I, I do enjoy it, and given the opportunity, I will go. But uh, I haven't been for a couple of years. And it's November, which around here is Renfest time. The weather's kind of tolerable. And so I started looking and making plans and finding a weekend that we could do that. And my primary reason for going, there's a lot of great things to see there, but there was a, a comedy show there. If, you, if you've ever ran fested, you will probably have run into Dead Bob, D-E-D. -E if you haven't, uh, go look him up. Dead Bob, image slideshow. Let's put Dead Bob up. And he's a puppet. He's run by the guy there in the black mask who uses a character name of Smudge, S-M-U-J. And uh, his, his real name is Clark Orwick. And uh, one of my favorite, favorite things to do at Renfest is to go see Dead Bob and Smudge and see how the show changes year to year. And it's not going to happen this year because as I was researching what's going on at the Renfest this year... Mr. Orwick passed away actually a couple years ago, March of 21. So. Hey, anyway, so that's the news of the day. Eep, op, org, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And last week, we showed how to install OBS Studio on a Raspberry Pi. And I've used it this week. It works. It's good. It's good. You can use it. You can stream with it in practical terms. It's not like what we tried to do with uh, Kden Live, uh, you can 
video edit with Caden Live on a Raspberry Pi, but it's not a good experience. It's just horrifically slow. Oh my gosh, is it slow. But OBS Studio works very well on Raspberry Pi, so I had some fun with that. I did some more testing with it last weekend, and it's good stuff. Well, so again, I had this marvelous show planned for today, and uh, it didn't happen. It's still on my list in probably two weeks because I got a really busy week again. Uh, work has given me a new project and that's going to just murder me for a while. Uh, but uh, I found this project tonight from my notes and well, I didn't fill that in. We're going to install another flavor of Linux on Raspi just because I happen to have that one in front of me. And, uh, it's it's Oracle Linux, and I'll give you a little bit of background on that. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of fun, and so and so that there was not much time to do a lot of news research this week. In fact, just one piece of tech news, and that is Maria DB is on the financial ropes. Okay, the guy who invented uh, MySQL and another product before that, we all know and love, uh, the Oracle's SQL Server, uh, left and went out on his own, and he created a, a, a free and open source software called MariaDB. I use it every day. I've got it running multiple computers here, and it's good stuff, and they formed a company, and while the software is free and open source, uh, companies that use free and open source software as their hook, they make their money on support. And MariaDB, is, they went public last January, and they are practically on the skid. They laid off uh, a, a chunk of workforce early this year. They have they've announced another 28% layoffs. They've killed two of their enterprise products. Uh, there is an unsolicited bid to buy them out. A venture capitalist has thrown a bunch of money at them. Uh, I think that they're making a bet. I think they're going to try and own the company. They gave them $26 million or something like that at 10% interest. Ah, are you kidding? And uh, a massive amount of stock has collateral controlling stock. So... Keep your eye out. I, I don't know where that's going to go. Typically, products like that wind up on their feet, but the companies don't do that well. There was other tech news, but there wasn't anything worth putting together. So we let that go. Slide, slide. Personal ransom experiences of the week. This close to done with the great washer dryer saga. Uh, I had to bring in the pros from Dover twice to get the vents cleaned out enough so that the new dryer would work. It, it, they're smart. They've got diagnostics built in. They start drying, they detect heat back up, and they detect air pressure going out the vent. And it shut down with a message on it that said D90. And this was the day after I had the pros from Dover come and clean up the vents because I knew they were clogged uh, because of a problem that we'd had for a couple years prior. And so they came out and they cleaned them out. We hook up the new dryer the next day. We test it. It popped up with this D90. I look it up in their documentation. It says 90% obstructed. What? They just... So brought the pros from Dover out again. And they came out again and they did it right. And they pulled out, I don't know, a badger and two cats and a hamster uh, nest. <laughs> just massive amounts of stuff that they didn't bother to get the first time. And hey, I got a dryer again. There was... <laughs> the washer hose had issues we had to take off a chunk of the wall today we got that off and, and we solved the the piping problem and so i can do laundry i can wash i can dry uh most of the wall is put back together my guy is coming back in next week when i'm back in uh shape to take on guests and contractors to mud it over and paint it and do all that stuff but wow what a saga it has been
<sighs> okay, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing interesting there. All right, that takes us to project. Let's see what else is up here, and then we'll start. El Projecto. They are a comedy duo, if you will. What? Oh, wait. Balut. Okay. <laughs> a dunk. Balut is Filipino. Common here. I've never eaten it. Common here, really? Yeah, I guess. So. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Don't recommend it, huh? Thank you in Yiddish. Like Danka. Okay. A dunk. Ever heard of Pew and Snot from Ren Fairs? I have not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great name, huh? <laughs> Try to get other people with a live show to say that out loud. A comedy duo. I signed in on a different account on laptop. Let me switch. All right. <laughs> That's right. We know who you are, Patricia. Patricia Manusi, Patricia Grace, Patricia Grace Manusi. We got it all. So happy we have a show tonight. Starting my mentorship with CNL tomorrow. So studying like crazy. Wonderful. Uh, you know, we don't have a live show to talk about uh, CNL anymore. I will see if uh, maybe I can do something over on the work platform. That'll be fun. Saw them in Colorado in 95. They let you in the States in 95? Oh, you're probably still in the service then or just out. Uh, congrats, Kyle. Yeah, exactly. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. It's time for me to start applying for jobs. So, a lot of review. <laughs> yeah, I hate that, Patricia Grace. Uh, that that heart just sticks up in the middle of the, or at the very end of the text, and you can't stretch it out beyond that. Sometimes that covers important stuff. Hey, well, let's fire up a project here. Um, it's kind of show and tell, but it's not for reasons that we will explain. So our project today is to install Oracle Linux doing version 9.2 on a Raspberry Pi. Installing Linux is installing Linux. It's all pretty much the same. Um, and especially when it comes to Raspberry Pis, there's a couple ways to do it. There's a hard way which says, all I have is a Raspberry Pi. It's my only Linux machine, or some other Linux machine. I don't have Windows, I don't have Mac. And so, you can do it that way. But it, it's it's convoluted, it's long. It, it's like everything in Linux. And you know, I think it's something that uh, Linux pros should do. But I, I'm here to give you easy and fun to do projects. And if you're going to do this at home, there's no tutorial for this. This is Dave's presentation. So you're going to have to watch the show on record and then do this step and pause the show. And then when that step's done, fire up the show and go to the next step. It's the way it works. So sorry. Uh, I'll have links, of course, in the chat feed. So some months ago, five months ago, six months, I don't think I'm part of that back. Red Hat, who owns Red Hat Enterprise Linux made some changes to the code and they basically locked out anybody from having it or using it unless they were a Red Hat customer. And if you were, you had to sign off on a non on an NDA, basically. You're not allowed to share it. And that's just so contrary to the license that it was developed on lots of people screaming bloody murder and Red Hat says, so sue me and good luck. So there were folks who, who cast about and looked for alternatives and there are very good alternatives out there, uh, but they had problems, right? To take Rocky Linux. Okay. We all know I love Rocky Linux. Uh, Rocky is a clone of Red Hat. It's code for code, bit for bit, bug for bug. Everything that's, Rocky, I'm sorry, that's Red Hat is Rocky. And the only difference is when there's notifications about like, uh, oh, I don't know, Red Hat image burner built into there. Well, they have to take that out when Rocky makes it. And, you know, they don't take uh, Red Hat Linux and decode it and change out the stuff. Rocky, one more time, Red Hat takes binaries 
from various sources and they put them together and they customize them and then they mash them all up into what becomes Red Hat. Rocky does the same thing. CentOS did does the same thing. Fedora does the same thing. Uh, Miss Alma. Alma does the same thing. Well, when Red Hat locked up the binaries, the files, that made it very tough. So a couple of people abandoned. A couple of companies said, you know what? We're, we're not going to be a clone anymore. We will take what we have and then we will develop our own. Cool. Some, they might develop some stuff that some companies want, but there's a lot of companies in the U S government that says we want red hat. And so a couple companies said, we're going to find ways around what red hat did. And we will continue to make a bug for bug bit for bit, bite for bite clone of red hat. And we'll make money the same way red hat does. We'll give the product away more power to you. I got Rocky running all over the place here. But uh, I can't call him up and get support for free. I got to cough up for a, a support subscription to various levels of them. And that's how they make their money. Fine. Well, while all of this was going on, there were some of the companies who said, we want to preserve the way of life of enterprise-grade Linux. Red Hat is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Rocky is Rocky Enterprise Linux. And so are some others. And so they formed a trade group, an association, a foundation called Open ELA, Open Enterprise Linux Association, whose goal, whose charter is to promote and maintain the ability to get the enterprise binaries and make your own. So all the companies can do this. People can do this. They can do it. Uh, those companies included certainly the, the folks from Rocky or some of the people from Rocky, uh, SUSE Limit, Linux, Oracle Linux, and others have joined on. I'm actually one of the, the, the first non-Linux developers or Linux companies to have joined as I did it pretty much the day after they formed. And it doesn't really mean anything. I'm not paying any dues. It just means I'm there on a Slack communication channel. I can put input. I can certainly read all the daily input. And it's fun and it's reasonable stuff. Well, so Red Hat does their thing, and a lot of people said, I don't need Red Hat for government compliance or for any other kind of compliance. I like it for what it is, but I don't like what IBM did. They own Red Hat. I don't like what Red Hat did, so I'm going to switch. And Rocky was one of the candidates. In fact, Rocky is, uh, has been the most popular adopted enterprise Linux in the last since the year, I think, give or take a year, certainly the last quarter, but I saw some stats on, on growth and adoption. So that's good stuff. Uh, and as that was happening, Oracle Linux got a much closer look. People are a little wary of Oracle because they change their mind sometimes. We've, we've seen this in real time. I've talked about this with you in the past. Uh, Oracle SQL is free and knock yourself out, use it anytime you want. And then they pulled the rug out on people and said, oh, no, 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 no. Now you have to pay support. And if you're entrenched in it, then you're kind of hosed. That was why people often use MariaDB and some other SQL databases. And so there's this great concern that right now Oracle Linux is good and it's free. It's a Red Hat derivative, uh, very close to Red Hat, but they've got some of their own stuff in there. And, uh, you know, everybody wonders, is the, the other shoe going to drop? If I'm entrenched in Oracle Linux, are they going to suddenly come up with surprising fees? And in fact, they have. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Nevertheless, should be aware of it, should be able to use it and at least learn a bit about it. So Oracle Linux, that's a good press. A lot of people conversion. They've compiled a, a version that runs on Raspberry computer. So I thought, well, we could, should, would try it. And I can't show you the installation live. I've got some screenshots, so I'm going to describe it to you. Oracle Linux is a Red Hat deliver, uh, derivative. They launched it back in 06. And here's the first link I'm going to put up for you. I'm not going to read all this stuff to you. There's not enough time. Uh, but here's a, uh, a nice article comparing the similarities and differences between Oracle Linux 
and Red Hat. In the chat feed at 34 minutes past the hour. So if you're going to install Oracle Linux on a Raspberry Pi, you can use a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, any of the threes. You will need an image file. Oh, by the way, if you, if you can install it on 3, that means 1 gig is enough to get it installed, right? 3's only had a gig. 2 is better, 4 is better. I haven't tried it on 8. Uh, you're going to need a computer on which you're going to burn. I used a Windows machine. You'll need the image file, I said. You need image burning software. And you can't use the Raspberry Pi imager software here. Uh, Win32 Disk Imager. I'll put the link up for that. Of course, you're going to need a micro SD card. Uh, for testing purposes, you don't need a big one. I did mine on a 16 gig card. If I were actually going to run Oracle Linux as a tool, I wouldn't start talking with uh, less than 64 gigs as a real world tool. And of course, you're going to need a, a USD, a micro SD writer, burner card, whatever. So I wrote mine, I burned mine version 9.2 on this Windows machine. So I downloaded, uh, I've already had it, but if you don't already have it, get the Win32 disk imager. Where can I get that, Dave? Funny you should ask. Take a look in the chat feed and you will see Win32 Disk Imager. We used to talk a lot about that thing before the Raspberry Pi Disk Imager came into existence uh, on my old drama show. But some of you who come to the show on the archive and even live weren't around when we did that show. So, okay. After you've got Imager, you can just... <coughs> now you need the image. And... Let me tell you, yeah, Rufus, you could use Rufus. All right, now you need an image file. There are two image files available at the link that I have just posted, and I'll put a screenshot of what you're going to see when you get there. In fact, let me just do that now. Image slideshow, bring it up. There we go. All right, so if you go to the link that I just put in the chat feed, oops, you will find a page, <laughs> such a jerk, that has two links on it. One is version 8.8, 8 8.9, something like that. And the other is version 9.2. So... Get whatever one you want. If you want to play with Linux or yeah, with Oracle version eight, fine. Uh, so if I, if you click either of them, you're going to get to a page that looks like this. And what you don't want to do is click on the green buttons on the right. That's not the image. You click on the name of the file that I have circled here in red. Just a regular left click is fine. You can also right click uh, and that's going to Pause it to download. You can call it whatever you want. You can leave the default name. Uh, I know you can barely see it in the screen, but it says it's 639 megs as a download file. Okay. So you download it. Cool. We are done. Oh, we're almost there. So now we got a problem. It downloads as a zip file. So you have to unzip it. You just win, use Windows Explorer, right click, extract, extract here, extract wherever you want, and you extract it. And there will be a cool little file that says Oracle 9.2 for Raspberry Pi. And there'll be a little Raspberry Pi icon on it. Oh, no, that'll, that's only true if you have the Raspberry Pi imager installed. Uh, but it makes a, a file, and the file has the extension XZ. That is a Linux compressed file and Windows up until recently didn't understand that. Now the current version of Windows, uh, both 10 and 11, finally understands XZ files. So after you've extracted the XZ file from the zip file, now you've got to right click and do another extract on the XZ file and pull out the IMG file, the image file. And if you've got an older version of Windows, and by the way, if you're doing this on a Linux box, Linux speaks XZ natively. He knows what you're doing. 
Uh, but what we got to do, is, if you've got this old version of Windows, you haven't upgraded Windows Explorer, then you're going to have to either use an online extractor that understands XZ files and can pull that out for you. It's going to be a big job because it's uh, more than 639 megs now and it's going to get bigger yet again. Or you can download a utility that knows how to extract XZ files. Uh, the most common and popular one out there is called 7-Zip. 7-zip. So, all right, we've downloaded the image file. We've unzipped it. We've extracted it from the XZ file. It's an image file. We've got the Win32 writer. So now we can do the process. You take your writer and you plug it into the USB port of your computer, or if your computer already has a, a micro SD slot, cool. Insert the micro SD slot in there. And it may do something, depends on what's already on there. I, I popped in a brand new SD card today that was fresh out of a package. And they're usually utterly blank. This one had partitions on it. And you don't have to take the partitions off. You don't have to play with disk part or anything like that. Just ignore them because the disk imager is going to overwrite everything, including the partition table. So now we're going to launch, if you haven't already installed, install Win32 Disk Imager and then give it a run. And let me bring that up. Image slideshow, bump here, go here. So it brings up a little menu. And in this box up across the top, you're going to browse for the image file. And then the little box to the right of that, that's where you select the micro SD card or USB thumb drive or whatever that you're going to burn it to. Accept all the default boxes in the middle. Down at the bottom, click the button that says write. It's going to give you a warning. Hey, you're going to overwrite anything that's on that disk. Only continue if you're sure you want to do that. Yep, I'm sure. And it doesn't take long. It's under two gigs after all that double unzipping. And when it's done, it'll say done. Cool. That's all you got to do. So now I've got a bootable operating system sitting on my micro SD card. I pull it out of the burner. I power off my Pi. You are going to need a keyboard and screen to get things started. So hook up your Raz pipe with power off to a keyboard and a screen. Insert your card into the Raz Pi and power it up and it will go through first boot. And it's an interesting first boot because the first couple lines of information are all about enabling and configuring your Ethernet card. I guess it presumed that you might want to do pixie booting or something like that. But then you see the usual Windows, I'm sorry, Linux boot up process. Lots and lots and lots and lots of lines of text. Uh, that runs for about 30, 40 seconds. And then you find yourself... Add a login prompt. It just sits there. It's going to name the server RPI and it's going to say RPI dollar sign login or login dollar sign. So you got to log in. And let me see. The default account name login is real original root. So you don't set up in advance an alternate account that's going to be your ad, ad, uh, administrative account. You do that later. So we're going to log in as real root and the password is Oracle, O-R-A-C-L-E, all lowercase. So let me put these, a couple little factoids here in the chat feed. Oracle will name the host RPI, the login account and passwords are root and oracle and so you log in you're sitting there with a login prompt you type in root it prompts you for a password you put in oracle and it says great step number one you may not continue until you change the password good idea so i went for the usual i like all my passwords uh on my systems that i'm willing to lose or get compromised to be the same raspberry so I type in Raspberry and it says error. And it says, I can't change it to Raspberry because that's in the dictionary. So you have to do something that's not in whatever dictionary they use. I don't know if it's in 
onboard one or if it's one that detects online. So I had to do something a little bit more complex and I have a standard complex password. So I put that in and ask you to put it in a second time. And okay, now you're up and running. And so let me show you what it looks like. How are we doing on time? 45, cool, we're about set here. Now you're still working at the screen and keyboard because SSH isn't supported yet. So we're done here, right? We, I'm done, this is all you had to do to install it. But there are some things that, uh, that I do with Red Hat distros that are probably universal. Now there, this is a server, okay? This is enterprise Linux. There is no graphical desktop environment. We can add that if we so choose, but not what's going to happen. It's, it's not its intended purpose. So set my password, no desktop. Uh, Avahi is not installed. Avahi is that thing that allows me to find a device by its name. This thing would be called in my network normally rpi.local. You can see that up on top. drushtx at rpi.local's password is, this is when I log in, uh, because I installed Avahi. Uh, SSH, the server, is not installed by default. So, I've got a link for you here. This is the complicated way that Oracle says you can use a Linux machine to burn the image to a micro SD card. That all fit, yeah. So it's a good link to use if you don't want to do what I just described. Now this being a Red Hat distro, it doesn't use apt to do installations. So the first thing I wanted to do was to be able to log into it over SSH so I can do some sharing. So I'm just going to put in a couple of these commands to show them to you. In fact, I might even put these all in the chat feed. So the first thing we're going to do is install the open SSH stack and the open SSH server. And we do it with that command, control V, there we go. And then we got to make it work. It doesn't work by default. So we do two more commands after that. Let me put them in the chat. And I'll explain them as I put them up on the screen. And there we go. Those three commands will enable SSH on here and it will make sure that they're enabled next time you log, you reboot. But there's a problem. There's only one account in this system. It's root. And by default, SSH has a configuration file that says you are not allowed to log in using the root account. So I got two choices. I can either go change the configuration file, which I did in this system, just because it's a test thing, but that's not the thing you should do in the real world. In the real world, you create an account uh, and you add it to the sudoers group, sudoer, sudoers group, and that's who you should be logging in and using as your day-to-day -day account. And I will show you how to do that in just a second because I had to do two other things here. The next thing I did is I want to be able to find this thing by name. I'll put this in the chat feed. And it's a real simple thing, no magic to it. All you have to do is say DNF. Now, since I'm logged in as root, I don't have to say sudo in front of these things. I just say DNF instead of sudo DNF. Install Avahi and all of these things in Red Hat and, and other Red Hat based distros, they will always ask you, hey, do you really want to do this? Yes or no? And their default answer, unlike those in normal Raspberry Pi operating systems or Debian distros like Ubuntu uh, is no. So you got to manually type in the letter Y to continue. Okay, installed Avahi, tested it. I could ping rpi.local. And one thing I haven't done in this system yet is change the name. That's really easy. The next thing I wanted to do was to, <clears throat> excuse me, edit the SSH configuration file. 
and they like Nano, or they don't like Nano. It's not installed in Oracle Linux. So I did a DNF install Nano. Okay, now I've got a text editor. You could use Vim or VI if you're insane. And then the file that you're going to edit is in Etsy SSH. It's a whole bunch of files here, but uh, as you look across the top row, second one is sshd underscore config. So I said nano sshd config. Let's try that again. Control X. I'm logged in as myself. I need to sue nano it. Sue nano sshd config. Nano doesn't exist or the user entry. Huh. Well, I used Nano in the past. Nano. Oh, well. Whatever. It's not critical. All right, the only way for me to do this is to come in as, uh, to log out and log back in as root instead of drush. Why not? Let's get out of there so I can show you this. Exit. Reset up, putty. Putty. I know you can't see it. Root at. Oh, you are just silly. Go away. Go away. Run putty. RPI.local. Login is root. Password is Oracle. No, I changed it to my complex password. All right, we're back in. Head over to Etsy. SSH. And now I can nano sshd config. There it is. As I roll down here, there is a line that I had to add. And I added it right here. There's a line here that's remarked out, commented out, says perma root login prohibit dash password. So this thing basically says, don't allow the root account to log in with a password. And I just put a new line underneath there that's not commented out and said, permit, permit root login space yes. And that was very, it was very happy. Now I could SSH and log in with the root account. All right, that's done. The next thing I did was I created a user account. Let's make another one here. Uh, we'll call him Fred. So I said, user add Fred. Whoops, user add. Okay, it's done. And then let's set a password for him. Password. For Fred, changing the password for Fred. What's the new password going to be? This is a complicated thing. Confirm it. All right, all done. Now I want to make him an administrative account. And so the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to say user mod minus lowercase a capital G, add him to a group. The group that I'm going to add him to is called Wheel. That's the group that if you're a member of, you can have administrative powers. Who am I adding? I'm adding Fred. Buzz, 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 grind, grind, grind. Okay, Fred is now an administrator. He can use sudo and sue and all of that good stuff. Almost done. There's only one thing that I need to do yet. There's a lot of really good stuff in the default repository, but there are eight other extra repositories that are very standard for Red Hat distros. It's called the 
EPEL, E-P-E-L, repository. And it stands for Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux. And what you have to do to install it, this is really kind of cool. I want to show you this. And I'm putting this in the chat feed. I'm going to use my pseudo powers. Minus C, I don't have to go as root. I can do this without su, but pseudo minus C, run the following command, put the command in quotes, and I'm going to say DNF install this RPM. And here's a path to this RPM. That's a package. And when you install that, that will load in all of the repositories. And then I saved one command for the end that I haven't run yet. I can't use those things until we enable it. Now I'm a little terrified here. Let's see what happens. User bin CRB enabled. I'm logged in as root. I don't know if I need to use sue here. Okay. I didn't need to sue. Okay, the repo is now enabled. I can now use the eight new EPEL repositories. Hey, that's a basic Red Hat distro install. There's some minor differences between Oracle's Red Hat, excuse me, and Enterprise Linux and the real one, but they're very good. They're very close. Oracle's got a couple more additional features built into theirs. They got better support for their Oracle. And you can do this. I, I recommend try this. Using it for most of us, if you're experimenting and logging, is the same as using Rocky Linux. Uh, and all of these apps are 99% the same. Oh, I wanted to put this back up. Uh, let me show you this. Let me go fire up Putty here because there's something I wanted you to see about that. Putty. Run it, rpi.local, log in as, we'll use, what am I going to show you here? I'll log in as drush. Well, yep, that's going to fail. <laughs> Let's try that again. I missed the H in drush. rpi.local account name d-r-u-s-h-t-x password okay we're in let's share so this is that last command that I put in and what I want you to notice is the path here, dl.fedoraproject.org. This was historically the place where we got Red Hat binaries. This is called the upstream channel for developing Red Hat. And this is an area that is one of the ones that Red Hat has blocked off, but they have left us at least the EPL repositories. So Fedora is still an important piece for everybody who's playing Red Hat. All right, kids, that is the show today. That is the project today. Huzzah. Let me check messages to see who was saying what while we were doing this. How bad will I regret that? Eh, totally. All right, something's going on on my machine. It'll fix it here in a second. Okay, it's back. I see what I want to see. Change that to that. There we go. We're all on time. <laughs> all that posting is me. <laughs> all right, I'm going way back here to catch up. The live emoji reaction. The last thing we talked about. Can you see them firing or only on the rewatch? Oh, you can see them fire. I can see them. Here, I'll do some. Hundreds and oh, and party honker and smileys and hearts. <laughs> uh.
<laughs> here we go again. Okay, I don't think I gagged. Oh, that's a me here. You are ever so welcome, Patricia Grace, who is now converted back to Patricia Grace. Cool stuff. Thank you. So I apologize. Again, this is kind of a slam together. Uh, I have really good shows in my next three shows list. Uh, there's exciting stuff. It, it's good stuff. A lot of Linuxy stuff, but it's not all Raspberry Pi. It's kind of generic Linux, and it's it's Linux technology, right? Linux runs the planet. You're running Windows at home. You're running Mac at home. Some of us are running Linux at home and the other platforms. Meanwhile, sitting quietly in the background are billions of Linux machines running web hosts and all the cloud services and, 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 and the infrastructure of the networked world is Linux. And so I think you got to know it. You got to participate with it. All right. Nobody else got anything else. We're right on schedule. Let us close this thing up. Uh, thank you as ever. And always, this is no show without you. I uh, hope you're enjoying it live. Hope you enjoy it on the, the archive feed. We will do this again Next Thursday, another fun show. Busy week for me this week. Uh, I'm, I'm not promising a good show next week, but I will be back in a breathing room after next week. Uh, what, Halloween week? Something like that. So, until we see each other once again, I wish you a great rest of the week. Take care of each other. Take serious steps to stay healthy, and if at all possible, call or visit your parents. And never forget, technology is great, but the greatest resource we have are you and I. With that... I bid you good night. I'll see you on a drama next Thursday and on the other platforms that I'm on between now and then. Until then, remember, how you do anything is how you do everything. Eat, op, or, ah, uh, ah. Uh.